Hey guys, so I want to talk about how we can use Fire Jail to enhance our privacy and security. But especially today, we're going to focus on privacy. And we're going to be using some historical uh, facts that Tor users, for example, being that I, in the latest video, showed how to put Tor browser right on your Pine phone, Pine tab, or any other Fosh device. This video, though, is going to apply to all Linux users. It's not just going to apply to PinePhone or PineTab or, you know, LibRoom users. It's also going to apply to any other Linux user who wants to use FireJail to enhance their privacy. And we're going to go by this fact that in the past, Tor Browser JavaScript had exploited to find the MAC address of the users. It is a way that Tor users in the past have been de-anonymized, and for the sake of the video, we're going to be using FireJail to block access to a particular file that most browsers actually have access to, which have the MAC address in it. So you can still use a MAC address spoofer, but keep in mind certain Linux systems have the permanent address in a separate file. So even if you use YPry or any other MAC address spoofing technique, you may need to also block access to some of those files if you want to, you know, just play with this little idea I had. And I actually introduced it in one of my posts on the buy me a coffee page that I run which has you know some blog posts and sometimes I write them once in a while for supporters only just to show my appreciation and I had an idea um, for blocking that access and I also wanted to do another part to the actual fire jail video series so here what we see on the screen is a Linux machine a pine tab and pine phone with the MAC address open on the Pine phone itself by having the browser actually has access to the MAC address file. And if it were exploited in a certain way, that kind of information could be collected in one way or another, and it could de-anonymize potentially a user. So we're going to be blocking that today, and we're also going to be talking about blocking access to the network for applications that don't need access to. That's another way that Tor users have been de-anonymized. And, you know, I think a privacy is kind of a game. It's a, it's a fun game to play. You know, I have nothing to hide, but I enjoy looking into different things with privacy. And one thing I believe in is using many layers. So if you have, you know, a single point of failure, you don't have to worry so much. So it, you don't necessarily de-anonymize yourself by, you know, messing up a firewall rule or whatnot. So what we see here is slash SYS slash class slash net slash WLAN0. Now, if you're using an Ethernet and you can also, you know, use FireJail to actually create your Ethernet MAC address. So that's something else that you would like to know. I can leave um, the flag for that in the description. Today we're going to be looking at Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi is the most common used. And the fact that browsers on the default Fire Jail profile have access to some sensitive files, I thought it'd be interesting to do this as a video. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a terminal on the machine in question and we're going to edit the fire jail profile so what we need to do now is we need to go into the fire jail profile directory which is slash etc slash fire jail and then ls will list all of the profiles there we're going to start with firefox and we can apply this to any other of the programs that we have on our system so we're going to open in an editor firefox dot profile and at that point we're going to go down and we're going to apply a blacklist to the profile and I had actually just done this for this video so what you're going to do this is not in the default profile is you're going to add blacklist and then this location slash sys slash 
asterisk and that asterisk is going to apply to all files and directories inside the SYS folder. You can also apply this to any other folder so if you want to blacklist you know the slash temp directory you might want to block access to all kinds of locations. I suggest experimenting play around. Now once you've added that blacklist line you will then save the firefox.profile profile or whatever application you're doing this for and at that point you will exit out and you will open up if you're on a pine phone or another you know device with fosh you would then go into slash user slash share slash applications in order to edit your actual shortcut that's on your desktop now if you're running a Linux desktop, a different machine, different interface, you can simply right click on the icon and then change the execution path to what we're about to type in. Now I'm going to open up the shortcut itself, firefox.desktop, and we're going to go down here to the line that shows the execution path for what happens when we actually touch on that icon and that line for PinePhone, PinePab users would be the EXEC equals line and before that we're gonna do fire jail so before the actual program command we're gonna put fire jail and then space and then the actual normal line so anytime you want to run an application in the sandbox with fire jail you simply run fire jail and then the command and at that point it will put it into a fire jail sandbox with restrictions and there's other things you can do as well for example we can use this flag to make it private and actually not have any memory or you know some of the metadata you may be worried about you may want it to open a private uh, window each time so what we'll do then is just do dash dash private and then uh, equals and the location but for this instance I'm not going to do that because sometimes I do like to um, have access to things so we're going to restrict that and now we have Firefox actually will open instead of having access to the sensitive files instead we will see this when you try to open that in the browser the ones that you blacklisted the locations if you try to type that in after finishing following this guide you will see access to the file was denied so the browser itself won't have access to that location or that file which may have sensitive information if a JavaScript exploit were to happen across your machine it would not be able to access the file that it was trying to access so that's one example now next what are we gonna do we're gonna try something else for another example we're gonna go ahead and look at my video player now another way that historically Tor users have been de-anonymized is say if you're you know if you're downloading a DEFCON video or something you know you can use any instance anything that doesn't need the internet you should block the internet for and you know for uh, another example here we're going to use VLC player and we're gonna block network access because really if I'm if I'm watching a DEFCON video I don't need it to contact DEFCON.org so we'll go ahead and we will open vlc.desktop this is just a random choice here but you can you know integrate this into this flag into any of your non-internet needed files so in case something somehow exploited your program it won't have access to the internet to send personal data so go ahead and open whatever it is that you are editing and we're going to go ahead and we're going to add fire jail to this as well and then we're going to add some flags that are going to help us block access every time so it doesn't have access to the internet when it doesn't need access you shouldn't let it have access and we're back at that exit line again and now we're going to put fire jail and then dash dash and then net equals none 
and what that does is it's going to put it in a every time you open the player or whatever it is that you're opening you know it will then block network access so if it doesn't need network access block network network access it's just another example of what you can do with fire jail it's kind of a part two I did a fire jail introduction video based on a request by a subscriber and I wanted to kind of continue that in the line of blacklisting and some of the basic things that you could use it for. And this is something, you know, I like using FireJail. I have it for my browsers and I actually am going to apply this to LiverWolf after this video. And LiverWolf, in case you haven't seen it, it's actually a Firefox fork that specializes in privacy and has a lack of telemetry data as well so it has all the benefits of Firefox without any of the things you may not be interested in doing like being part of studies etc etc so that's what we got today guys uh, that's another video on how to protect your privacy if you want to see more like this make sure to leave a comment subscribe share and if you want to support this video, you can also go to buymecoffee.com slash politictech. But what I appreciate most is people who take the time to share, like, and subscribe and comment on these videos. So I appreciate that. And I will be back later with more on Linux and how to protect your privacy.